Hi, my name is Henning Kaltschreiner. I'm an independent consultant working for D&D Audio Technic in the Avenue Alliance. And I want to show you a presentation we have shown at the Infocom 2023 show about Milan and network convergence. So what is this about? Um, I want to dive a little bit into the history of Ethernet for media networking. And I would say that Ethernet uh, has always been the vision for network convergence and interoperability. It started uh, roughly between 2000 and 2010, when there was a time when many different solutions for media networking were actually competing. So we had a time division, multiplex-based network solutions like OptiCore, Medionet, um, Stage Tech Nexus, and others. Very nice technologies, very reliable, but uh, completely proprietary and not compatible with anything else. And then slowly the first solutions that actually used parts and layers of Ethernet came up, like CobraNet and EtherSound. And finally, also Dante and this strange thing called AVB. And we will come back to this later, what the story is about this. However, at the same time, most devices had many different interfaces and ports uh, used for control. So on the rear of an amplifier or a mixing console or a pre-amplifier, you could find RS-232 ports, CAN bus, GPIO, MIDI, and various others. Uh, it was quite a chaos at that time and pretty hard to deal with. When Ethernet then became the predominant solution for device control, the path to media networking became a bit clearer. There was a question uh, like, couldn't it be one network? And it could be a network based on standard IT components, and the network could carry media and data traffic possibly in one structure. And once all devices are connected in one such network structure, they could possibly interoperate. Uh, that was a great vision at that time. So this whole idea came with a promise. It came with the promise that we could use the network that is there anyway, for control, we might be able to use any switch that is available for Ethernet, and that data and media traffic could coexist without interference. And this would mean that devices would just require one standardized cable for control and audio and video. And of course, the promise and the idea was this would be reliable, fast, and easy enough for professional applications and we might achieve finally the interoperability that was heavily desired already at that time. And this would mean all devices could become controllable from one instance, devices could somehow talk to each other, and all the devices could become monitored by a software, maybe even remotely. And devices could, of course, exchange audio and video streams in real time. However, it didn't take a long time until the first problems came up. And uh, the main reason for this is that legacy Ethernet has not at all been designed for critical real-time traffic. I would even dare to say the people who have developed Ethernet would probably be a little bit scared about what we're actually doing with it by sending media uh, streams through it. So the current media network protocols, they use certain additions to Ethernet for achieving their performance. And namely, this is DiffSurf, also called QoS, uh, a mechanism that priori prioritizes critical packets over other packets. It's a timing protocol for synchronization called IEEE 1588. And this exists in several versions and even different profiles within these versions. And unfortunately, they are not fully uh, compatible uh, with each other. And lastly, there is a, a protocol managing multicast uh, packets in the network called IGMP, 
this guarantees that once uh, packets are broadcasted through the network, they are not uh, coming up in every leg of the network where they are not needed. A big problem is, however, these are standards and they are written standards, but there is no standard for the exact implementation of these features. So media network protocols make certain assumptions about the presence and the implementation of these critical protocols in the network and in the network switches. But switch manufacturers have mostly not taken these pro-AV requirements into respect. If they implement IEEE 1588 or DIFSERF or IGMP, they do this for other reasons that have very little to do with the requirements in pro-AV. And this ends up with quite many practical problems for designing and operating pro-AV networks. Mostly there is a deep network design and configuration required. It's quite difficult to find suitable switches because it's hard to tell if they have implemented the required protocols in exactly the required way. And there's a high risk for failures when different types of traffic share one network or one cable in the network because uh, they are all competing about the quality of service priorities in, in the network and can actually uh, interfere with each, other, with each other. And there's also a lack of understanding by IT people for the requirements and methods of pro-EV media networking because it is not something that has been promoted by switch manufacturers or where trainings are offered and, and these kinds of things. So in the IT world, using legacy Ethernet for media networking is not a standard way of working and it's not what these devices actually have been built for. So what is the status now 2023 uh, on this topic? I would like to say that individual protocols can work well on individually well configured networks. So if we have something like this, and this protocol A might be an audio protocol like AS67 or Ravenna or Dante, it might be a video protocol like IPMX or STVRE. If the network is well configured according to the requirements of that protocol, then this can work very well. But however, as soon as we add best effort control data, we already get into some trouble because best effort control data could at any time exhibit bursts of data into the network and that cannot be managed by the QoS properly. So in that case, it's a strong recommendation and best practice to split these uh, two different types of traffics, mostly by using VLANs. The disadvantage of this is, however, that one cable to a device carrying both types of traffic is not possible any longer. So we have kind of lost one of our promises here. When multiple media protocols share one network, interferences and incompatibilities are quite frequent. So the situation I'm showing here might look a little bit weird, but in many installation projects these days, this has become very common that we will have some devices in the network that require Dante, some will require AES67, some will require Milan, AVV, and then there will be video uh, uh, protocols required and maybe even lighting control over Ethernet and all together with quite a lot of best effort control traffic. And this will cause uh, issues uh, in the quality of service prioritizations and especially also for the timing protocols, PTP version one and version two, they are to some extent really incompatible. And uh, depending on the design of the switches, they cannot really exist in one network side by side. So, I would like to say a switch solution for this type of fully converged media and data network systems simply does not exist today. 
and there is no official specification for a pro AV switch that could handle the convergence of different traffic on one network. So it's very hard to have different types of pro AV media streams sharing one network together with standard IT traffic. Technically, it's almost impossible. IT departments are not educated for this use case. Switch manufacturers mostly don't cover this scenario. And what is the workaround in the end? It is to design systems with separated networks. So very often in installations, but also in mobile systems, we see that people actually build separate networks, uh, one for Dante, one for A67, one for the lighting guys, one for video, and so on. And uh, this is in the end, a design of a complicated non-convergence that is very hard to manage and maintain. So the status is um, the scenario shown here in this diagram with, with quite a number of different media protocols plus control traffic is a re realistic requirement in many or mainly even most pro AV applications already today. However, we have to recognize that this solution simply doesn't exist based on legacy Ethernet. And the problem grows exponentially with more devices coming to the market that actually have media network interfaces on Ethernet. Um, and they want to be configured in the systems and, and uh, a network design has to be put in place in order for them to work. Now, how and why is Milan a part of the solution here? Let's start with the paradigms on which Milan actually has been built. One paradigm is uh, to clearly recognize that legacy Ethernet does not provide the mechanisms for 100% reliable, fast connectivity of media streams and control data in one network. So in this diagram, we can see Dante, AS67, QLAN, Ravenna, they all build on the same ground of legacy Ethernet with some additional protocols added. So the main paradigm of Milan is we have to improve Ethernet itself first in order to really build a future-proof, easy-to-use network system for all requirements in pro-AV applications. And this improvement is provided by latest IEEE standardized network technologies, AVB and TSN. So it's important to understand that the IEEE itself as an organization uh, said uh, in the early 2000s that media networking with 100% reliable deterministic traffic should not be executed on legacy ethernet it requires a different deterministic and synchronous Ethernet to build this on. And this is uh, where AVB was developed and later uh, it got a bigger scope called TSN, which stands for Time Sensitive Networking. Milan was built on this new Ethernet in the strict belief that only this provides a true technological foundation for reliable, easy, and user-friendly pro-AV network systems. So we want to make the promise reality. And how does that actually work? In a network with AVB, audio video streams are automatically reserved across all the involved switches with a guaranteed delivery at guaranteed time. So the traffic between two or more devices in an AVB network cannot be compromised by other traffic in the network any longer. And the time in which the delivery actually happens is guaranteed. We achieve a latency of less than one millisecond at a gigabit, and the synchronicity is record-breaking at one microsecond, which guarantees a very, very high phase linearity. Multicast is handled automatically, so there is no need to fiddle around with IGMP settings and these kind of things. This is done by the new intelligence in the switches. 
And uh, a nice feature that has been designed into AVB is that it doesn't take all the available bandwidth. It leaves guaranteed remaining bandwidth for best effort control traffic on each port. So this means that we can actually use one cable to our device. And on this cable, we can have control and video or audio travel without any separation uh, needed and without any interferences. And maybe the best thing here is that this behavior of the network is actually standardized and certified. It doesn't rely on vague assumptions. So what does this mean for the topic of convergence? With Milan, we actually achieve a coexistence of different traffic types in one network. We have low or maybe even no configuration effort for setting up a network and making it work. And we have guaranteed performance and reliability, uh, something that is very, very welcome in pro AV applications. And all of this builds on IEEE industry standards and the compliance of the devices is certified by the Avenue Alliance. So there's a guarantee coming with this that, uh, that your choice of switches will actually do the job. And one thing that is very remarkable is that the mechanisms in AVB that guarantee the deterministic behavior they can also be used for other types of traffic. So for example, AS67 is already standardized uh, in a way that also AVB could be used as a transport layer for AS67 packets. It's just a question of people making a choice to use it that way. However, in, the, in a network as it's shown here below, even uh, Dante or other uh, media networks benefit from all the mechanisms that are actually working in the network, such as traffic shaping and the very precise synchronization. So this TSN principle, as I would like to call it, can in future also work for other types of media traffic and protocols. And by this, we believe that we can actually achieve the conversion that is urgently needed in our industry. Many thanks for listening.